Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today a different video from the usual. We're going to we are in the office because it's raining outside so I couldn't go out and uh, photograph and we're going to talk a little bit about editing photos, especially of course landscape photography. We're going to talk about color and how to edit color and also a new preset that Adobe launched in this new upgrade which is Adobe Adaptive, Adaptive Profile a beta version of a new profile of color in Camera Raw. So let's jump right into it. Let's, let me show you how it works, what it does and if it's good or not for your editing process in landscape photography. Let's go. Okay, so we have here the Adobe Photoshop open. As you can see, you need to have the newest update in the program. So it's Adobe Photoshop 2025 or 2025 in order for you to see the changes. And the changes are in uh, Camera Raw, at least this change that we are going to discuss. So we have here three photos that I'm going to open. And let's open it and Camera Raw will pop up automatically. So let's start for this first one. You can see here that we have an image that it has a very high dynamic range. So you, you have a very strong highlights and you have parts of the photo in the shadows. So this profile that is here in at its Adobe color, it's the default profile that we see in all of the photos that we upgrade or upload, I'm sorry, for the camera raw. You have a lot of profiles that you can choose. These five here are the most known and you can also browse for another profiles that you can choose for your photos. So you can see here that you, depending on the profile that you, that you choose, you will have significant changes in your photo, especially of course in the color and in the way that the program renders the, the light in the image. So you have here the neutral, you have here the Adobe landscape, which a lot of people use for his landscape photography, and you have a lot of others too, the standard, the portrait, the vivid, and uh, the monochrome for uh, uh, black and white photos. Uh, I'm not a big fan of these profiles. I don't use it often because I, I always like to choose uh, to edit my, the photos by myself. But in fact, these profiles that can give you some starting point for your editing and then after that you can edit your photos uh, in, in your own way. So now Adobe has put one other profile in, in this list, which is the Adobe Adaptive Beta. So this is the new one and we will see how it works. Let me click here and we can see already the changes in the photo. So the before, after, before, after. We see here a lot of changes in the photo and what this profile do is uh, some changes in the tonal part of the image. So it changes a little bit or it balances a little bit the, in, the in the dynamic range, the highlights with the shadows and it changes also a little bit the color. So I believe we have here a more HDR image than the previous image that we had before using this new profile. As always in the profiles we have the amount that we can put we can increase the amount and we can decrease the amount to zero. By default it is placed in a hundred but you can put as your own way. Okay, so let's change to the other photo. Let's see this one. Let's click in the profile. It changes the profile and you can see the changes that he made in the photo. Let's see the before, after, before, after. So there are significant changes here. Uh, going on here in especially in the low light uh, part of the image. So the image It seems a little bit again uh, more HDR image than the previous One without the profile. So again, this one here is very dark. Let's use the color profile Adobe Adaptive and well Actually, it works good in this one so it is what it is. You can use this new Adobe Adaptive Beta profile to uh, start an editing point 
and to give your photos a little bit of correction in color and in low light, especially in low light, giving to, this, to the photos a little bit of HDR process. If you don't want this, of course, you don't put this profile, you just, you just use the Adobe Color or Adobe Landscape, for example, and then you do your edit. If you do think that this can help you edit, you just put this starting point in the Adobe Adaptive and then you continue your edition. Okay, so let's go again to the first image and we will now start our editing process. So we have the Adobe Adaptive Beta going on here and I believe that this can help me uh, edit my photo. So I'm going to place this Adobe here in 100. Let's not be very demanding for this profile. I'm going to put in 100 and I'm going to edit the color in the image. So color process can be very complicated and can be very simple, but in one way or another, I believe it's mandatory for our photos, especially in landscape photography. Color plays a huge role in our landscape photography. So we need to be careful, of course, when we edit color. If you use the saturation slider or if you use the vibrance slider, you can use it, but you don't have any kind of control in those operations. So let's see. So let's start here for the color and vibrance. You see, it's a lot, of course, and saturation. What does mean vibrance and saturation? It's simple. If you use the vibrant slider, you, you are saying to the camera raw that you want to increase the saturation of some colors, especially the ones that present less saturation in the photo. If you use the saturation slider, the program will saturate all the colors in one. Just uh, at the same time, all the colors will be more saturated. So, as an editing process, it's better to use the vibrance than the saturation, okay? But none of them can give you what you need, which is total control when we edit our photos. For you to have that, you don't use this color tab here, you go to the color mixer and for this tutorial purpose we are not going to talk about point color just the mixer okay so you have here the hue saturation and luminance you can use the both of the three to uh, edit your color what i love to do is to put the saturation all the way down in all of the colors i get i believe that now that you suspect what we are going to do here we are going to control the colors one by one in the saturation button, you increase your saturation and the saturation will increase all of the colors. In the vibrance, when you put this, the vibrance up, uh, the program will saturate more colors than others, but you cannot decide what colors you want to be more saturated. In this process, we can use individual edit in all of these colors, so that's why this is great. So you can start by placing your saturation all the way down to minus 100 and in this way you can see how color impacts your photo and uh, what are the, the impacts that uh, increasing saturation will have in your photography. So let's start for the reds. Well no color at all here. Oranges, you can see the oranges here starting to appear so we want a little bit of uh, saturation in the oranges the yellows of the trees back there, too much yellow and like this, maybe like a saturation of 18 in the greens, we want the greens too but you see if we change, if we put a little uh, more saturation in the greens it will be oversaturated, we don't want that so we just want a little bit of saturation here in the greens aquas, not too much, but blues, yes you can give a punch of blue here in the water and the purples and magentas will, don't, will not have many impact. So I'm going to put just here. So here we have, let's see the before, the after. So we, here we have uh, one way of controlling color individually. And that's, that is for me the best way of 
um, saturate our colors or desaturate our colors in landscape photography. So let's continue because we have also luminance. We don't need to put the luminance all the way down here because luminance will be always in this range here from 0 to minus 14, 15 or something like that. And what luminance does, it controls the light in the color. So put a, a, a color more in highlights or less. So and you can see here in the blues, we want to increase a little bit the highlights here in the blues, in the aquas also to give that punch here in the water. The greens, we will put a little bit for plus six yellows. Maybe we want to to take a little bit of luminance in the yellows, oranges, and here we are, we have our first color edit. Let's continue for this one, all the same thing. Uh, let's start, let's put this one here because it's more visible the changes. Let's put everything down and let's start editing our color. So reds, no reds, oranges, yes. A lot of oranges here in the in the foreground in the rocks. We don't want we don't want a lot of oranges. Yellows. We do want more yellows. Greens. Yes, we want. Aquas. A little bit in zero. Blues. We want to make a little bit bluish the water here. Purples. And magentas. So we have here our saturation and as you can see here in the sliders we have different scales of saturation for each color so you cannot do that with the saturation button or with the vibrance button okay let's go to luminance and to make this very very fast we're going to put this here like this and Okay, just make a little bit here of uh, changes. So before and after, and we have a considerable change now here in the photography, in the photo, sorry, uh, with the adjustments that we have made in color, and of course also with the Adobe Adaptive Beta. So you can change also the hue if you want to give a little bit of punch, more punch in the photo. And okay, we have our photo edited in color purposes. So here you have, and uh, this was a quick video for you to help you a little bit and on how to edit color. Please stay away from the saturation button. Please stay away from, from the vibration button. You can use it, but use it wisely. And if you want to uh, edit your colors in the landscape photography, use this method with the mixer color adjuster adjustments or color mixer to adjust your colors individually. And so to wrap up this video really quickly, uh, we have seen the new profile from Adobe, which you can use for your uh, landscape photography edit. You, it gives you a different basis for you to start editing your photos. And then I give you this big tip for your editing, don't use the saturation button, don't use the vibrance button, you can use it, but avoid that. Use uh, the color mixer for editing the colors individually. So thank you very much, I hope you did find this video informative, I hope I can help you to improve a little bit your edit, and stay tuned for more videos, and see you on my next video. Bye!